Nice on the downs. Where's your praise, though? There we go. Good. It's graduation night! Yay! It's the big day. We are going to work on sit stay, and then we're going to play with some new things that your dog probably hasn't seen yet. Okay? So, let's work on our sit stay. With our sit stay, sit stay means I want you to sit right here. That's all it means. Doesn't mean lay down, just means hang out right in front of me. Um, with your stay, you need your release word. If you start a stay, at some point you have to end a stay. You have to tell your dog that they no longer have to stay. So we use our release words for that. So back on week one, we talked about release words. Go play, all done, free, that'll do, dismissed, adios. So how is it stay works? Stay hand is empty, treats will come from the other hand. So it's a two-handed exercise. So it's gonna be sit, stay. Good dog, give him a treat. Stay, good dog, treat, stay. Release word, no more food. Once you give the release word, it is over. There's no more cookies, it is just done. All good things happen while your dog is in that sit stay. Jane's gonna demo for us, who are we gonna borrow? All right, Cooper. What is Cooper's release word? All done. All right. So, Jane's got a handful of cookies there. We're going to ignore the jumping. Good. What? Yep, got to get the puppy wiggles out. It's all right. Okay, so we're going to do our sit. All right, here we go. Stay. Oh, his butt came up. Stay. Stay. Good. He gets a treat. Stay. Stay. Good. He gets a jewel. Oh. That's good. All right. So he's got a super quick tush. So first thing we're going to do with him is not going to add stay. All we're going to do is reward him for sitting and being cute in front of us. Okay? Because if we keep adding stay, it's not working. We want to get him comfortable with hanging out in a sit, and that means you're going to get cookies. Because right now he gets a cookie and his butt comes up. He's got a fast butt. All right, and a sit, and he gets a cookie. And a sit, and he, <laughs> that's a lovely spin. Good, and we give a little cookie, and we'll give another cookie, and we'll give another cookie. And this is some frustration. He's going, I'm really interested in Bella tonight. And Bella's doing her best to pretend he's not there. Good. So, and this is frustration, okay? See if he'll do a down for you, Jane, and just go ahead and reward a little down. I want to get him, get his mind on something else. Can you get some calms for me? I know, I love you. I know. Good. And we're just going to praise and reward him for laying down, get his mind on something else. Something he's successful with. That's a lovely down. Get him refocused a little bit. Yep. He's like, all right. Sometimes you just need a break, and that's OK. All right. And you know what? We are going to give. Go ahead, and you guys can give him that. And Jane's going to borrow another dog. Because we don't, we don't want to frustrate him. So we're giving him a, just a few minutes, and we'll come back. Now, we're going to go back to Cooper. He's had a moment. He's like, yeah. I know. Hey, buds. Here. All right. So, Jane's going to have him do a sit in front, and she's just going to praise and reward for that nice sit. Good. Oh, good boy. He's like, heck yeah, lady. Good job. All right, Jane, when you're ready, add your stay. Stay, stay good, he gets a treat. Stay. stay, good, he gets a treat. Stay. stay, and it's over. With our stays, stay hand is empty, treat from the other hand. Stay, good dog, treat, stay, good dog, treat, stay, all done, and it's over. You guys ready? Let's do it. Stay right in front of your dog, do not back away.
Once you tell them stay, do not go too long. Keep it nice and short. I want you to work up toward a one minute sit stay with your dog right in front of you, no distractions, no distance. Here they are and here you are. A good solid minute. When they're consistently at a minute, then we're going to start adding distractions. Holding a toy, bouncing a ball, stepping to the side, turning to the side. When they can do a full minute with constant distractions, then we'll start adding some distance. The distance will come last. So we'll get there, but it comes later. So duration and then distraction and then distance. Those are with cookies. As your stay gets longer, the treats become more frequent. So what does that mean? That means that when they're really good at a 10 second sit stay, maybe they only get one cookie in the first 10 seconds. But between that 10 and 20 second window, they make it three. And when they're really good at 20 seconds, maybe they only get one cookie in that 20 seconds. But between that 20 and 30 second window, maybe they get three, four, or five. So as the stay gets longer, you become more generous with the cookies. That's going to help us build up that time so that we get to a minute. So on week six, we'd like to bring out some things that your dog may not have been exposed to yet. The whole purpose of this exercise is to build confidence and trust. This is a great relationship building exercise. So I'm going to go around the room and explain what everything is and then the rules of the road. Okay. So we have some weave poles. I want you to use a little cookie and lure your dog through, in and out, in between the posts, okay? Be careful because it's easy to get the leash caught up on this one. We have our little ladder. This is used to create a little body awareness. A lot of dogs, especially young dogs, they don't necessarily pay attention to what that tush, or those back feet, are running over. So this creates a little awareness. So we want them to walk through it going this way. So you can have a little treat at their nose and you can lure them through, or you can drop a cookie in each one of the squares and let them hop their way along. Over here we've got some things with wheels. So things with wheels can be scary. So let them go up, check it all out while they're not moving. If they don't care when they're not moving, go ahead and move them around a little bit. Move the stroller, move the skateboard, move the car. Don't take them for a walk, don't run them over. We don't want to scare them, but we want them comfortable with things that move. Over here we've got our little kiddie pool. We want them to step into it and do a sit or a down. So this one, when they step in, it might make some noise. Okay, this is harder than you might think it would be. Um, you can show a couple treats and toss it in or leave a little cookie trail. But we want to encourage them to hop in there on their own um, and do a sit or a down. We've got our hut. We want them going into something that's covered. Some dogs will go in and turn around and come right back out. Some might go straight through or make a turn. It doesn't matter. Um, make sure before you do this one that the leash is not wrapped around your wrist. Because if they do go all the way through, you're going to have to drop the leash to pick it up on the other side. If it's wrapped, you can't drop it. This goes flying. It scares the dog. Totally defeats the purpose of the exercise. We have our two jumps. Jump number one, jump number two. Do these as one exercise, so just make sure no one else is starting on the other end. You can adjust it, we can make it lower or higher. This one, we can take the levels off for our more petite dogs, okay, so they don't have to jump quite as high. A lot of you guys, you're gonna be like, piece of cake, like the puppy jumps over the coffee table, no big deal, right? And they're gonna go all the way, and they're gonna stop right in front of it. So if you have a dog that stops right when you get to it, show a treat and toss it. A cookie in motion usually gets the dog in motion. So that'll usually get them up and moving. Over here we've got our little teeter. We want them on a different type of surface, so we're going to have them step on some wood. Have them start on this side and go this way. Always start on the side that's down. When they walk on it, it does move. There's towels underneath so it doesn't drop quite as far or make as much noise. Okay, you can check it out. Um, 
If you can't get them to walk on it going this way, see if you can even get them to step on it going the opposite way. We just want those paws on a different surface. And then over here we've got our two little uh, hula hoops. Have them step in and do a sit or a down. Have them step out before you pick it up. That one does not make noise, this one does. It has the beads in it. Okay, turn it to the side and then have them walk through going this way. I want it sideways, not this way. If it's this way and you try to get your dog to come to you, many of them won't because they feel like this isn't enough room. Bella would have enough room, but a lot of them, they won't. So that's why it's turned this way. Have them go sideways, okay? And then we've got our little trampoline. This is used to simulate some of the vet scales that kind of have a little wiggle and jiggle to it, a little give. So we want them to step up onto it and do a sit or a down. You may need to leave a little cookie trail. Um, along the way, you will be impressed on how far they can reach before they actually put a paw up. They get really long necks for this one, all right? So when we do these exercises, do each one three times in a row. So get on the trampoline three times in a row. Because if the first time's scary, second time gets a little bit easier. Usually by the third time, it's a piece of cake. It's not that big of a deal. Name each item. Weave, ladder, stroller, car, um, tunnel, pool, hut, jump, over, teeter, hoop, whatever you want to call it. Name each item. That's that relationship building part of it, OK? You're there to protect them and to keep them safe but you're building some confidence that if they're unsure of something, you can help them work through, all right? There's no particular order, though I recommend doing the hut before the tunnel, because if the hut is scary, the tunnel's usually scarier. So we can build a, build a little confidence with that first. Please be aware of other dog's space. Um, we don't want any unexpected goosing. All right, guys, are you ready? Come on out, have some fun.
We are going to talk about the joys of adolescence. Yay! Congratulations, you now have teenage dogs. Um, you get your cute little puppies, they follow you around. Your big challenge is usually your house training and the nipping. Um, it gets better, and then you guys are like, all right, we're finally, we're getting through. And then all of a sudden you wake up one day and it's like they don't know their name. They've never heard the word come before. They've never heard the word sit. Like the brain has turned off. That is the day that they enter adolescence. When they start losing their puppy teeth, that's when it happens. So usually between 14 and 16 weeks of age. It is part of the normal development of a dog. The selective hearing kicks in, garbage reading, stealing things, not coming when called. They've never heard any word that you've taught them before. Those are all really, really normal things that happen during adolescence. Your, not dog is phys your dog is not physically or mentally mature until they are two. My retriever mixes, and any terriers, I got no terriers, three, okay, can take a little bit longer, but it is absolutely normal. You have not entered the worst stage of it yet. Usually the most challenging part I found is between seven and 11 months. That means that you need to be really, really consistent with them. You've set rules, this is not the time to cave, stick with it. Mental exercise as well as physical exercise are both really important. You need to give them a job. If you don't give them a job, they will self-employ. And that is when they start their landscaping, okay? Or when they start stealing things or shredding things, they find their own job. So it's important that you give them things to do. Um, my, one of my favorite toys, this is called a Buster Cube, okay? Um, my first two dogs ate every meal for seven years out of a Buster Cube. You put their kibble in there and they flip it around with their nose or their paw in order to get the food to come out. So instead of the two minutes it takes them to eat at the bowl, it takes 15 or so to knock this around. Another one out there is called a Tricky Treat Ball. That's this one. Same idea, you put their kibble in, it's softer, it's quieter, um, so they have to roll it around instead of flipping it. But the same idea is their, their kibble comes out. It is graduation time. When I call your dog's name, come on up with them to receive your diploma. We're going to start with Bella. Come on down, Bella. Yay, Bella. There you go. You're welcome. Next we have Evie. Come on down, Evie. There you go. You're welcome. Next up is Riku. Come on down, Riku. There you go. You're welcome. Next we have Ivy. Come on down, Ivy. There you go. You're welcome. And Louie. Come on down, Louie. There you go. Next up is Hans. Come on down, Hans. There you go. You're welcome. Last but not least, Cooper. You look tired, dude. There you go. You're welcome. Congratulations, everyone. You've officially completed Puppy Kindergarten. Yay! Thanks, Bella. <laughs> Your puppies, don't forget to have fun with them. They are getting bigger. They're looking more like big dogs. So we, we often forget that they're still very, very young. Okay, so be patient with them, be really consistent. This session is a lot about teaching you guys the basics. We're not just teaching your dog, we're teaching you how to teach your dog so that you know how to follow through with it at home. You are all free to go. Congratulations, yay!